so we have been looking at uh, prediction error method and uh, let me just take a quick review again of where we stand now we have this uh, data set y and u okay uh, we want to develop a model which is in general of this form uh, g is modeled with respect to the known inputs uh, typically the manipulated inputs and hq is a model with respect to unmeasured unknown disturbances now u here can include measured disturbances if you make some simplifying assumptions so u is what i that's why i kept keep saying known inputs okay so if you have measured disturbances there are ways of modifying uh, modifying this model to uh we have to make certain simplifying assumptions of course but because the inputs manipulated inputs that go out of a computer are piecewise constant the disturbances that you measure are not piecewise constant even if you measure a disturbance see for example you have uh, some uh, you know feed water used for cooling some system and if you are measuring the feed water temperature feed water temperature throughout the day keeps changing because atmospheric temperature keeps changing even if you measure it truly speaking it is not piecewise constant but if you are measuring fast enough you know you can make an assumption that it is piecewise constant and model uh, so that u here could be known inputs or it could be manipulated variables which are piecewise constant okay this part is everything that is not explained by the known inputs that is the only correct uh, interpretation of this so this component actually captures unknown disturbances okay it captures measurement errors it captures uh, errors because of approximations you are actually having a model which is linear model the true system might is in general non linear very rarely a real system is linear perfectly linear so this is something that captures everything that is unknown everything that is not captured by this component okay the way we do modeling is to use one step ahead predictions so we develop this one step ahead predictor and as a part of exercise we will be actually developing more such predictors so developing one step ahead predictors for different simple forms is part of the exercise that we are going to do tomorrow and uh we estimate this prediction error okay this method is called as prediction error method because we minimize the sum of the square of prediction errors okay this is prediction error this is yk is the measurement at instant k okay y k minus 1 is uh sorry y hat k given k minus 1 is prediction of y based on measurements available up to k minus 1 that is the okay so this notation we are going to use throughout the course k given k minus 1 means prediction of y using measurements available up to time k minus 1 theta is the model parameters that you need to estimate okay and then i was saying that we minimize some of the square of errors we minimize the variance okay there is nothing nothing uh, when I mean nobody uh, stops you from minimizing some of absolute errors you can do that okay or minimizing uh, maximum error minimize maximum error over the that is infinite norm you can minimize some other other uh, function in general two norm has some special properties which i am going to discuss today uh, why why this two norm is so so important why uh, we can get some insights into parameter estimation if you happen to use two norm okay that's why we want to use two norm so this this method is called as prediction error method so what is the other method what are the other uh, approaches to do system identification modeling 
there is one more method which is based on projections okay and this method is known as subspace identification method it has become very popular in last 10 to 15 years it is just based on projections ideas of projections so nice thing is um, you know you can just use simple matrix projections uh, to come up with the model uh, so uh, whereas here you have to use nonlinear optimization since you are using nonlinear optimization here uh, it is very important that you give a good guess if you do not give a good guess okay how to give a good guess okay right now you know Leung's toolbox is doing it for us when we give data it uh, gives you model okay there is never any problem for two models one is ARX model other is FIR model which we have been looking at in the these two models are very easy to identify from data and that is why they are very popular in the industry but the trouble with these models is that you need large number of parameters so you need large data set so you need you know uh, to conduct the experiment for a longer time which is loss of production. So the models which are easy to develop have some trouble associated with it okay models which are difficult to develop have some other trouble you know the trouble is shifted from the experiments long experiments to difficulty in uh, solving but probably difficulty in solving okay is easier to deal with than longer experiment longer experiment means loss of production okay which means it is money okay a difficulty in uh, solving a problem is offline okay you can collect data and do some tricks to make the problem uh, give a good guess and so on so uh, if you ask me what should you do whether you should go for uh, armax or box jenkins model or arx model i would say you should go for arx model or go for armax or box jenkins model okay and try to give a good guess for for example uh, even if you have small data you first try to create uh, identify an arx model which is uh, which will be bad you know because the data size is small but you can use that to create a good guess for your uh, you know armax or box jenkins model and then proceed so if you use your uh, knowledge uh, in, uh, intelligently you can actually plan your experiments very well and save money that is that is important okay now let's get into the properties of the model so i talked briefly about these uh, steps in the model development and we also said something about model structure selection then i told you about this one particular thing here is that uh, uh, i mean what i have introduced to you is just tip of the iceberg it's just uh, uh, you know just beginning what what the system identity is actually you should not just stop at my notes i have uploaded two more documents in Moodle I do not know how many of you have seen them one is uh, slides by Professor Leung why particularly Professor Leung he is uh, a well known authority in this area uh, there is a very nicely written book uh, by Professor Leung I have mentioned the book here system identification I personally I do not feel it is a book for beginners okay the other book which I have mentioned here is Soderstrom and Stoika that is a better book for beginners the way he introduces is uh, much more easy to digest but Leung's book is you know one of the standard reference it is any time you get doubts about anything in system identification you can always go back to Leung and you will see that he has discussed it you only realize that such a question or such a problem exists maybe after one or two years but uh, he has thought about it this toolbox MATLAB toolbox has been actually written by Professor Leung so uh, there is a compressed version of his lecture notes about 30 40 pages which also I have uploaded there so there are two things one is uh, presentation slides of a workshop he conducted in University of Alberta in 2004 and the second one is uh, you know his uh, condensed lecture notes on system identification I think there are some 50 60 pages uh, so those of you who are uh, going to use these techniques uh, in future um, 
and uh, where all these techniques are used everywhere I mean from uh, you know if somebody decides to go into finance and then you know wants to do a share price modeling you can do that it is time series it is a you can model it as a stationary or a non stationary process you can view it as a stationary you can find a transfer function uh, driven by white noise that you know uh, tells you about how the share price is you have a model for share price fluctuation and then what is the, what is k here day by day you know you can take today's price tomorrow's average price yesterday's average price question is can i predict if i have a model why do we develop models we can do predictions we can forecast okay so that part will come a uh, little later when we will start uh, using these models for forecasting now uh, you know when you have this y minus y hat what is this epsilon epsilon is y minus y hat okay now you may want to suppress certain frequencies that are there in y minus y hat let's say y has measurement errors which are very high frequency you know that these are not going to be useful in modeling you can filter those errors using a low pass filter or a band pass filter and that is why you can actually uh, have an objective function in which you minimize uh, a filtered error and not the directly innovations or error itself this this signal y minus y hat or this epsilon is many times called as residuals model residuals it's also called innovations okay so modeling error whatever you want to call it uh, residual is a very very commonly used word model residuals yeah epsilon epsilon f will not be white noise no we stop when you epsilon is white noise but not epsilon f is white noise epsilon f is filtered how, how can a filtered signal driven by a white noise be a white noise it will be colored noise epsilon f will not be a white noise you have to stop when epsilon is a white noise yeah yeah so whether by minimizing epsilon f will you be able to find epsilon which is white by properly choosing order you should be able to find epsilon that's my uh, you know first cut answer that it, it's it should be possible to whether it is guaranteed always is i i i have to go back and check but i think it should be possible to find out uh, just because you are minimizing the filtered value doesn't mean that yes you can go back to epsilon yeah see you are minimizing the filtered value but that filter does not enter your model anywhere okay filter does not see that filtered value is only used to knock off certain frequencies so so as to emphasize particular frequencies in your model okay so actually when you use that model the way it will enter probably in your model is afterwards if you want to use the model you probably have to use filtered f and filtered u okay so it will translate to filter f and filter u no epsilon f cannot be white noise no? by definition epsilon f is a, is a uh, is a correlated noise there is a transfer function multiplying epsilon epsilon f cannot be white noise epsilon can be white noise okay epsilon f cannot be no no what i, I what i was what i mistook your question last time was if you minimize this objective function is it possible to get an epsilon which is white noise i think it should be possible to get but uh, what are the guarantees and all that we have that it should correspond to the system bandwidth and the system bandwidth is something which you have to know as an engineer which you know which is a knowledge which you should know that in what bandwidth i should which bandwidth is relevant for my control which bandwidth i should cut off that's where this choice of this filter here can play a very critical role in identification how do you choose this filter so this modeling in some sense is not completely black box when you choose this filter you have to have okay or when you choose the model order you have to have some idea about so in some sense it's a gray box model you know you are
no no so you you have to go and do some uh, uh, preliminary experiments with the system you have to look at your data and do some spectral analysis you cannot do it just like that <laughs> so as i mentioned multiple input multiple output systems uh, arx models can be very easily uh, adapted can be changed arx modeling scheme for multiple input multiple output system trouble with arx is large number of parameters uh, other possibility is that output error armax box jenkins models typically they are developed as multiple input single output models so if you have uh, if you have a system which has two inputs and two outputs you develop two models for output 1 and two inputs output 2 and two inputs and then you club them together i am going to talk about how to club them together today okay okay now uh, even if i want to do this part very briefly i would at least need uh, three four lectures or three lectures probably uh, but i am just going to talk about it very very briefly i am not going to go into details if you are uh, want to know more about this i have notes here at the end appendix this appendix here this appendix here i have explained uh, you know basis for this analysis that frequency domain analysis now analysis is to get insight into how parameters uh, you know in, into these two things one is bias error and the variance error and what is bias error and variance error i'll talk about it i'll talk about the final expressions which are derived after all this analysis okay now uh, if you for the time being take engineers approach and say that well um, there is a derivation which is true let me concentrate on the final result and let me see how i can use it analyze it you have to uh, understand or to plan my experiment if i can do that that is enough okay because ultimately even if you uh, understand all the derivations finally how to use that particular result to plan an experiment is more important not how you arrive at the derivation okay so as an engineer i am more interested in the final uh, res result which i can use to analyze so i am going to directly talk about final result so this is power spectrum analysis and this is based on the fourier transform of the auto, co auto correlation and cross correlations it's a very very powerful tool and here you are able to do this because you are using two norm because fourier transform you can take uh, and talk about uh, um, you know uh, interpretation in the frequency space because you are working with in a hilbert space where two norm is uh, you know available to you and you can move back and forth between different reference frames time domain and frequency domain reference frames and then uh, or view points and so uh, so skipping this long story short we just want to look at these two uh, these two these two types of what kind of errors that can occur okay when you identify a model from data okay there are two types of fundamentally there are two types of errors uh, for the time being uh, actually i would say there are three types of errors but the third one which comes because of approximation of a nonlinear system with a linear system let's ignore that right now let's assume that a true plant is perfectly linear okay under that situation what are, what are the errors that can occur okay one error is that uh, the plant is perfectly linear i got data i do not know what is the order okay i do not know what is the order of the plant so i chose some guess you know second order transfer function third order transfer function fourth order transfer function. this is my guess and ultimately i am going to use some criteria like archaic information criteria and make some call on which model is good okay so i do not know what is the truth okay so one error so what i have done here is that let's say g is represents g theta n hat represents the model transfer function that you have estimated from data and g q is the true this is the true this is estimated so i am putting this uh, theta star and theta star in between okay so this difference this difference is between uh, you know it's just what i would say a structural bias structural bias comes because the true model is different 
okay true model has let's say uh, seven parameters and i am using a model with two parameters yesterday we had we had seen one problem okay uh, fir model with two parameters we were trying to identify it using one parameter so a similar situation that is because you do not know what is a true order you guess okay so the first type of error is a structural error the true differential equation is 10th order you modeling at the third order so the structural error so whatever you do a third order differential equation cannot imitate behavior of a 10th order equation okay you can make them bring them close but 10th order is 10th order and third order is third order third order cannot uh, you know imitate 10th order beyond the point so this is the first thing that you have to know that there is a structural error when you are identifying a model second error comes suppose you know the structure okay what is the other type of error other type of error comes because of variance errors variance errors are because of the data length okay you know that you know that if you take infinite data you will get perfect model okay but you cannot take infinite data you cannot run the uh, test for uh, you know perturbation for infinite time you have to stop you have to take finite data so finite data will give rise to errors which are called as variance errors so the second type of errors are introduced because of the variance errors okay so total error in the estimation is a combination of bias error and variance error bias error comes because of structural mismatch variance error comes because of limitations finite data length okay uh they also come of course because of uh, unmeasured disturbances and noise but the two things are tightly related and uh, you can if you want to reduce the influence of noise on the estimation you better take larger data length so uh, we'll we'll see what is the relationship just looking at the final expressions let me uh, again go over this idea of of bias error what is this bias error concept in in process control this is a very very popular model this model okay this model form if i go back and uh show you here there are two model forms which are very very often used in chemical con process control one is y or i'll write it in terms of uh laplace domain you can convert it into time domain or uh, into discrete time laplace domain this model is k p divided by tau s plus 1 e to the power minus theta s okay this is this is called as f o p t d f is first order okay f o is first order okay uh first order with uh, time delay okay and i think p is for single time constant pole okay this is a first order with time delay model okay you have one time constant okay and you have you have gain time delay and time constant very simple model okay many times useful to approximate high order systems you have some uh, distillation column which is uh, 100th order system you don't want to model it as 100th order system you model it as this the other model which is very very uh, of course into us the other model which is very popular is called as soptd so this is uh, kp upon tau square s square plus 2 tau zeta s plus 1 this is second order plus time delay i think p stands for plus second order plus time delay soptd so this is soptd and this is first order plus time delay model okay so these models are very very popularly used these are low order models first order or second order trying to use one pole or two poles to approximate uh to approximate uh, uh you know 
a system which is uh, high order ok. So, of course, when you convert this into discrete form this will be y k is equal to some beta 1 q to the power minus 1 plus beta 2 q to the power minus 2 on 1 plus uh, alpha 1 q to the power minus 1 plus this SOPTD model when you convert into discrete form you will get a second order difference equation. This is second order differential equation, this is second order difference equation ok. So, they are interconvertible, but again here you are trying to build everything using beta 1, beta 2, alpha 1, alpha 2 and then this d even the true system might be very high order you tend to use a small order model. See suppose uh, you have a system which is multiple input multiple output between each input and output pair you tend to assume a model which is of this form or this form because uh, you know uh, overall order of multiple input multiple output starts blowing up ok we will see that how it happens. So, uh, often this smaller dimensional form is convenient ok, but now what is the trouble why this and then there are in the books on process control you will find special methods to identify these models this k p tau and theta from some step change and all that ok. So, this has been a very popular method of modeling uh, where is the trouble. So, let us look at a scenario where you have 8th order transfer function this is 1 upon 10 s plus 1 ok. I did this identification uh, exercise and I decided to model it as a first order plus time delay. This is my time constant and this is the time delay this combination approximates this transfer function ok and typically how do you check in process control it is it's, it's, uh, typically you check the step responses step responses seems to match pretty well ok the gain is correct ok it is see this is this blue line is the uh, approximation and this green line is the true plant and you will say well this, this is not a bad approximation ok it is matching quite ok in the step responses. Moment you compare the frequency responses you see what is the problem ok frequency response do not match ok frequency responses are matching in this region right this is the low frequency region because there is a good match in the low frequency region you know you see good match in the step response. But if you if you inject a signal which is high frequency ok then there will be significant mismatch between the model behavior and the plant behavior. Now, suppose it happens that when you are operating the plant the frequencies of uh, the plant lie in this region then there is a big mismatch ok model is wrong and you use model for doing all kinds of things you use model for control. So, you are using a wrong model in this frequency region ok. Now, that there are two solutions one solution is not to use first order model ok use 8th order model, but in this case I know the order is 8 in real plant suppose the order is 100 am I going to use 100th order model you know identifying 100 time constants of a 100th order model will be difficult it is not so easy task ok. So, I do not want to use 100th order model I am not comfortable with it uh, I want to use still first order model or second order model or third order model maybe you know uh, not a very high order model ok. Then the question is question is for this particular approximation for this particular approximation the good match is in this region, but I know the relevant frequency is in this region can I shift this match from here to here. I do not mind if there is a mismatch here, but I want good match you understand what I am saying. So, what I am trying to say now let us be practical that the real system is high order I am always going to develop a low order model. So, there is always going to be this structural mismatch between the truth and the model ok. Now, in which frequency band you want the mismatch to be low and in which frequency band you want the mismatch to be high that is your choice 
okay but what is the inf i mean how do you decide how do you analyze that okay that is where this frequency driven analysis comes into picture okay uh, this derivation which i am presenting on this one page would probably require a lot of time to go through if you start doing it but uh, uh, is a uh, lot of things you have to accept and finally we just look at the result okay uh, you just go back into the appendix and uh, try to see if you can understand the derivations is uh, uh, everyone here or with me on this expression how do you get uh, uh, the error between uh, see you have to yeah we have this expression we have this expression for epsilon okay now uh, substituting for uh, the truth substituting for the truth and for the estimate okay and doing some algebra okay which i am not going to do right now here okay you can show see what is what are the terms here this just tell me what is h hat estimate of what is when we use hat what is the what is the convention what is g hat estimate of the truth okay and when i say g it is the truth okay so i have expressed the error prediction error in terms of four things what are the four things true g true h okay estimated g estimated h this i can do through some algebra just believe this right now okay and you can see what is what is what is y y is function of true g to h what is y hat function of estimated g estimated h and what is epsilon epsilon is difference between the two okay so just believe me that you can do some algebra and get this expression okay how am i going to use this now uh, what is the variance how do you estimate the parameters by minimizing the variance okay by minimizing the variance is is everyone with me on this i am minimizing the variance and estimating the parameters okay now i am taking finite data length right when i actually do estimation of the parameters i am taking finite data length but doing analysis with finite data length is very difficult you have to do analysis by taking limiting case so what is my limiting case as n tends to infinity okay at n tends to infinity as n tends to infinity uh what is what is what is this quantity variance what is r0 what is r0 is variance of the signal what is variance of variance of epsilon okay it's variance of epsilon any doubt up to this point is it fine it's variance of epsilon okay now is the trouble or now is the trick not trouble so you can using this parsevas theorem you can interpret you can interpret this quantity okay in the frequency domain you can transform this quantity limiting quantity that is limit as it tends to infinity this quantity you can convert into frequency domain okay now i am going to use this expression for converting into frequency domain okay and if i convert i finally get this particular term okay so minimizing minimizing uh minimizing this quantity minimizing what is see i have taken spectrum of epsilon which is given by this quantity here spectrum of epsilon is when you have a transfer function you can estimate the spectrum by putting uh, q is equal to j omega okay by putting q is equal to j omega you can estimate the details are given in the appendix for this go back and check so i can relate this variance with this 
I can I can convert it into spectral domain and what is this phi uh, what is this phi spectral density of epsilon that is given by this quantity why this quantity it is coming from here okay now uh, let me explain uh, looks very very complex when you see for the first time okay but now why it is useful why am i why am i saying that this is going to be useful now look at it look at things here what is this quantity what is g j omega e, e to the power g of e to the power i omega this is frequency response of true what is this frequency response of estimate so i am i am saying that difference between this frequency response and this frequency response is weighted by spectrum of inputs okay is weighted by spectrum of inputs okay so what is the consequence okay so so this difference is weighted by see if you are doing optimization okay if you are doing optimization in optimization um, if you have some of the square of certain terms okay some terms have higher weightage and some terms have lower weightage what is the tendency tendency of the optimizer wherever there is a higher weightage it will try to reduce that term more and more wherever there is lower weightage it will not bother about optimizer see because if it tries to change that variable the objective function doesn't change you get my point see if you have an optimization problem if you have an optimization problem which has uh, different different components some components have higher weightage some components have lower weightage okay now the tendency of the optimizer see wherever there is higher weightage optimizer will try to bring you know uh, minimize that component it is more sensitive to that component it is less sensitive to the component where there is less weightage okay now how this difference see actually behaves in the estimated model depends upon how you choose this frequency spectrum okay how you choose this frequency spectrum so actually this frequency spectrum shaping can be used to shift this difference to different zones okay see let's go back to i have these two signals input signals okay and what is their corresponding power spectrum this is their power spectrum so what is the meaning of this meaning of this is that this power spectrum has low low power at low frequencies it has high power at middle frequencies it has okay low power at okay whereas this signal has high power at low frequencies and almost no power at middle and high frequencies okay now if i perturb the plant using this signal then let's go back to this if i perturb the plant using the signal which has high content at low frequency okay then optimizer will work in such a way that this difference is small at low frequencies okay this difference is small so model is good frequency response are matching in the low frequency region okay and it doesn't bother about uh it doesn't bother about matching the frequency responses in high frequency region why because spectrum see this 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 integral is weighted by the spectrum right this spectrum is low at high frequencies and middle frequencies so the tendency minimizing this optimization function in time domain would implicitly do you know will implicitly reduce frequency domain mismatch at low frequencies this is the insight which this equation gives okay this is not possible for one norm or infinite norm this is possible with two norm why two norm we can convert use parseval's theorem and use fourier transform and get into frequency domain do this analysis okay and even if i derive this equation finally i am going to say only this this is the important part of it how do you derive at this equation don't bother about it right now okay so it tells you this frequency domain expression tells you how to plan your experiments very very critical okay see if i use this signal 
if I excite the plant using this signal okay if I excite the plant using this signal then it emphasizes middle frequency and this high frequency and low frequency are not so important what would happen is this right now this model match is very good here it will shift from here to here there will be mismatch at low frequencies there will be mismatch at high frequencies if I use white noise I will get white noise has all the frequencies okay but as I told you that white noise using for perturbations is only in computer simulations you cannot do it in reality okay perturbing a plant with white noise is not practical so even though it is ideal it is not practical okay so uh, so so you have to so see that is the problem since it is not practical you are forced to make a frequency choice what is the frequency choice you make ha huh. so what is what, what is the frequency range of your interest how does it influence the parameter estimates and the frequency response that is given by this expression this expression tells you this expression tells you that i can shape this difference by using by shaping the input spectrum if that that is the only message i wanted to take there is nothing more uh, even if you understand the derivation finally you have to understand this that i can shape this difference okay this interpretation is possible only because of parseval's theorem only because you are using two norm two norm fourier fourier transform and then you know you can interpret this into frequency domain and say that well so how i plan my input excitations okay is uh, can be understood through this analysis okay that's why lung's book is filled with uh, frequency domain analysis along with uh, time domain analysis so this is this 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 from this entire complex expression the take home message is only this that input spectrum can be chosen intelligently to minimize difference between the frequency response of the truth and the model in certain okay now what is what is uh, what is the effect of uh, adding that filter if you if you add that filter and do all the calculations that filter spectrum will come here i had talked about this filter okay it will turn out that this filter is another way of shaping see one way is to sh to shape the inputs okay other way is to choose the shaping filter the spectrum of the shaping filter will appear in this equation so that i have not shown here if you do that filtering that spectrum of that signal will appear in this expression okay and uh, uh, so if you have not chosen inputs correctly you can posteriori you know you can choose the shaping filter correctly and try to you know uh, mend the error that you made while choosing the signal so there are tricks which you can see only when you go to this frequency domain it is not possible to see this in the time domain okay the other thing is other thing that is done in uh, lung's book with quite detail is this variance errors okay so what you can show is that variance of estimated frequency response variance of estimated frequency response okay we can think of it in terms of possible error band in the frequency response variance will tell you what possible error band in the okay is related to these two terms so, small n here is number of model parameters okay capital n is the data length capital n is the data length okay and this is noise spectrum and this is input spectrum okay this this ratio of noise spectrum to input spectrum is called as noise to signal ratio okay just look at this expression and tell me how will you make variance error small one way is to choose small n c one way is to choose this n use less number of parameters if you are using large number of parameters better choose large n capital n should be large okay if you are uh, 
apart from this you have one more parameter that you can manipulate what is what is sigma v here v is the noise okay noise spectrum is there in the plant what is in your choice what is in your hands input spectrum so i can choose input spectrum in such a way that noise to signal ratio becomes insignificant so if 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 the signal dominates over noise this ratio is small variance error are low okay if i if my input spectrum dominates over the noise spectrum okay then uh, so when you when you do this modeling and perturbations people will talk about you know what is your signal to noise ratio signal to noise ratio is other way around that is 5u by 5v is called signal to noise ratio 5v by 5u uh, is called noise to signal ratio. so whichever way i mean sometimes people use noise to signal ratio sometimes people use signal to noise ratio so uh you have to make noise to signal ratio as small as possible or signal to noise ratio as large as possible okay signal should dominate noise should be small okay and this this insight doesn't come looking at some of the square of errors this comes only when you look at frequency driven expressions that's why frequency driven analysis is quite important when it comes to so uh so how do you reduce variance errors you reduce variance errors by choosing large data length okay uh by choosing correct signal to noise ratio so you choose signal to noise ratio to be large phi u by phi v is large then phi v by phi u is small and then um so all this analysis is extremely important while getting a good model okay though i am just giving you the final bits bytes of what is useful you know uh, all this analysis is extremely important in developing a good model you cannot blindly use toolboxes which are available now uh, unless you understand all this theory okay and these whatever uh, one and a half month lectures are just to sensitize you about this there is lot more to this than what i'm doing yeah you can get wherever you want so you can shift match see the idea is that you have to live with bias because real world problems are very high order see the take home message from this is that the real world problems are actually high order you are always going to develop a model which is low order so the bias is going to be there bias is part of identification so all that you can do is to shift emphasis in which frequency band you want good match in which frequency band you can live with mismatch okay how do you do that by choosing input spectrum properly okay or by choosing shaping filter properly so there are different ways of handling this actually actually if you if you look carefully this h hat is actually a shaping filter for this mismatch this term phi u by h hat square comes here so this signal to noise ratio so this is signal and this is noise spectrum this appears here okay so signal to noise ratio also shapes so many times people say that noise modeling is not because you want to identify uh, disturbance model is noise modeling is because you want to get a good model uh, deterministic model so noise modeling is a way of shaping is a way of shaping this term okay that is the that is the idea anyway so let's move on uh this brings uh, to end the lectures on system identification and hopefully uh, a combined effect of the mitsem where you solve problems and when you start doing actual uh, simulations that's where you will learn much more about this than this these uh, uh, lectures so let's go back uh, now to uh, now we want to go back move to control okay uh i have spent almost 40% of my time in talking about modeling well in reality when you go to a plant implement a advanced control 70% of your time will go in modeling 30% of the time will go in control once you have a good model you are done you know you are there so now what we will be doing is mostly algebra and that is much easier than because now you are in the once you translate the reality into a model which is nice linear difference equation you are in the world of uh, 
linear algebra you can do all kinds of things okay. Now as I said uh, there are two viewpoints dominant in control one is transfer function viewpoint the other one is state space viewpoint uh, and uh, I do not want to uh, profess one or the other but I belong to the state space viewpoint. So I like to work with state space it is all linear algebra and uh, simple linear algebra of matrices. So I am going to convert my model back into state space form I like state space form. So I want I identified this transfer function okay we will talk about how to deal with E k and all that right now let us look at one CSO transfer function single input single output how do I convert this into this standard form that is my question okay. So afterwards I am not going to bother about how did you get the standard form we have the standard form I have the standard form it is quite likely that I have a mechanistic model then I did linearization and then I did discretization. and then I got this model okay or you know I had this system to play with uh, these are the inputs these are the outputs I introduced some fluctuations I recorded the output as a function of time and then using this uh, you know input and output data. and using some system identification tool I come up with this okay I do not care finally how do I come up with this model I could have identified RMAX model you know B Box Jenkins model output error model whatever you chose finally I am going to convert into this form and going to work with it okay. So uh, which route you came to this form afterwards is not important okay so we could uh, we could come to this form any which way okay it is not going to matter. So I am going to talk about one possible way of doing realizations other possible ways are given in the notes I will explain one okay one which is little uh, uh, complex to understand first two we will try to see whether we can cover first two today but uh, doing this is not so difficult it is pretty easy what is the okay what is the aim aim is to choose phi gamma and c in such a way that c times g i minus phi inverse gamma is same as or oh not g okay should be q okay. Uh, I want to choose c phi and gamma in such a way that this g q is the transfer function that is my aim there are different ways of there are infinite ways of doing it there are no there are no finite number of ways I will prove that also. Uh, but I am going to talk about some uh, you know popular ways and why they are popular will also become clear after some time when we start doing controller development. So this first form is called as a controllable canonical form okay what I have done here is I have introduced one pseudo variable here you see this pseudo variable theta okay I have rewritten this equation I have rewritten this I have rewritten this equation okay by introducing an intermediate variable which is this neta k okay same equation. So I am saying that this operator operating on neta k uh, is effect of u k entering the system and y k is same transfer function just a trick introduced one more uh, term in between okay. Now this, this particular first equation okay is equivalent to this difference equation just check this is q3 so I will get neta k plus 3 this is q2 
data k plus 2, q data k and is this okay? Uh, yeah, all three are negative here. So they should be positive because when they, when they come on left hand side they will be positive, I have taken them on the right hand side. So that is why they are negative. Is everyone with me on this? Right? Okay. So I am going to define three state variables. Okay. X1 k is data k plus 2, X2 k is data k plus 1 and X3 k is data k. Now, those of you who have done numerical methods, we had done something similar if you remember converting high order differential equation into n first order dif differential equations, right. This is equivalent thing for a difference equation, okay, it's equivalent thing for difference equation. Is this okay? This, this term I am calling as x1, this term I am calling at x2, this term I am calling at x3, okay, three states I have defined. Okay, what is this term? X1, yeah, this is this term, this term is X1 k plus 1 will be neta k plus 3, that is, you see this? Okay, I am going to use that next. See here, what is done? X1 k plus 1 is nothing but neta k plus 3. Okay. So, this first this equation is written in terms of x1, x2 and x3. Okay. So, now do you see I have converted a third order difference equation into three first order equations. I have converted okay, a third order difference equation into three first order equations. In general, nth order difference equation can be converted into n first order equations. Okay, is this is this transformation okay? See, there is a relationship between these two variables. The relationship between these two variables that is captured through these uh, x2 k plus one. X2 k plus one will be neta k plus two, which is same as x x one. X2 okay. So, have I written correctly? No, no, no. There is an error here. Okay, now just check is it okay? X2 k plus 1, uh, X2 k plus 1 will be neta k plus 2, so that is X1. X3 k plus 1 will be neta k plus 1, so that is X2, right? So I have three different equations in place of one third order, it is not, it is not coming here. Is this okay? Okay. So then you know I just convert this into what is called as controllable canonical form. Okay. I have just rearranged these three equations, these uh, bottom three equations. I have rearranged into matrix. You get this particular form. This is called as controllable canonical form. And uh, I want to now get y is equal to c of x. Okay. Y is equal to c of x is um, it is very easy because yk is equal to uh, b1 q square plus b2 q plus b3. So, if you multiply you will get this which is same as this is x1 k, this is x2 k, this is x3 k. So, I got y is equal to c of x, okay. I got y is equal to c of x. The next one I want you to go back and read and tell me if there is an error. There is another form called as observable canonical form. The derivation is little more complex. Just go back and read this derivation. Okay, it's not. There is nothing fundamentally, uh, you know, difficult to understand. It's an algebra to get another way of state realization. What I'm going to get if I do this way of state realization is I've explained the steps here. I'll get this. Uh, I'm just going through it very very quickly. Uh, yeah, I get this form, this particular form is called as observable canonical form here. You will see that the matrices are now just changed their, you know, one is transpose of the other, C and B seem to have changed their place, but uh, there are different ways of getting state realization. 
there is no unique way of coming up with the state realization. That is an important message. That there are different ways you can get the state realization. All of them will have same transfer function. All of them will have same transfer function. In fact, uh, you can do any transformation of this. Uh, you can do any transformation of the state by multiplying by uh, invertible matrix, and you can show that that is also. So if I get this, if I get this, and if I multiply both sides by invertible matrix, okay, I will get another, uh, you know, state space form that is that is very much possible, uh, and even that new state space form will have same transfer function. Transfer function is invariant. State realizations can be many. Okay, so this. Uh, simple thing tells you that there are you can transform into some other form where uh, this intermediate state variable is theta and uh, pretty much the transfer function will be same. So, it will not get uh, a different transfer function. So, the realization of a transfer function into a state space is not unique. There are infinite possible ways you can get it. Normally, we get it using these two forms controllable canonical form observable canonical form because they are very easy to construct okay but you can multiply that form with an invertible matrix you will get another realization all of them will have same transfer function that is the key thing any one of them any one of them any you you take one one realization c phi gamma another realization c tilde phi tilde gamma tilde all of them will have same transfer function okay that you can show because this different matrices are are related through invertible transformations okay if they are related through invertible transformations you can uh, be sure that the uh, it's the same it's a realization of a so what is the meaning of these states which which you get here x here the physical there is no physical meaning that you can attach to this x see i got this state vector here I got this state vector here x k plus 1 is equal to this matrix into x k plus this vector into u k. What is the real physical signal here? u k. What is another real physical signal? y k. Okay. This x k has no physical meaning. It is a mathematical construct which helps you to put everything into one standard form. Okay. So, so we are going to use this x okay because it is convenient to put it into this form and then work with it okay linear difference equation models very well understood so this realizations are non unique there can be infinite ways of realizing the same transfer function into different phi gamma uh, c matrices all of them will give you identical transfer function that is the message yeah Yeah, I will come to that. Good question. So, I will answer that question. Let me come to multiple input, multiple output systems. Okay. What I will show you is that if I work with multiple input, multiple output systems and if I work with state space models, final form is the same irrespective of whether it is multiple input, multiple output, single input. For a CISO transfer function, it is a scalar transfer function. MIMO transfer function matrix is very complex business. Okay. Here, everything is same whether it is CISO or MIMO or MISO or CMO or whatever okay. The state space model will be just look same finally okay how. So, uh, let us say I have uh, let us consider a situation where you have 3 outputs and 1 input okay. So, I can construct a state realization for this which looks like this. There are 3 outputs B1, B2, B3 for each one of them will appear in this C matrix. Just go back and think about it. It is not see there are 3, three parallel lines all of them have same denominator okay. Only here you have B1, 1, B1, 2, B1, 3 here you have B2, 1, B2, 2, B2, 3 and so on okay. So, all that will happen is that this matrix this matrix instead of becoming single output it will become multiple output all three are 
modeled here okay final form mathematically looks same phi gamma and c okay yeah mfd is some completely different description so i don't belong to mfd uh, i don't like mfd descriptions now what about 2 cross 2 if you have two inputs two outputs what do you do okay uh, i can develop one model here okay i can develop one model with respect to u1 i can develop a state realization okay with respect to u2 i can develop another state realization and i can put them together and create a big state realization okay is this okay i have two things and then uh, i am going to stack x1 and x2 see go back here and see what we have done we we have split this there are two additive parts one is effect of u1 on y other is effect of u2 on y for this component we have developed one state realization this is y u1 that is effect of uh, or or contribution to y due to u1 that is given by this state this state space model contribution of u2 to the y is given by this state space model and this plus this is nothing but yk okay so i am going to use this to define a combined state vector x1 and x2 x1 coming from u1 model x2 coming from u2 model okay i can just combine it i can just stack you know this state space models mini state space models can be stacked into big state space model this form is again the same whether it is multiple input multiple output single input multiple input whatever final form is same it is it is not different. So, my algebra can be only on this particular form I do not care if I start working with matrix fraction description if I start working with polynomial mat, uh, you know matrix description algebra is very very messy controller design becomes very messy well you have advantage you can work with frequency domain but here you have computational advantage you know you can do everything in time domain. So, I can just finally get the same form mathematical form remains same I have just given the same thing for uh, MISO models and observable canonical forms. If you have MISO models you can develop observable canonical forms which will look like this okay and then same thing you know you consider a 2 cross 2 system and then you develop two models you combine them into one big model one big model finally will look the same. So, take home message is state space form state space realization is you know will look same irrespective of number of inputs number of outputs you know finally same mathematical form. So, I just have to deal with one equation afterwards life is simple. So, four tank model. So, RMAX model we can look at it as one output and two inputs what are the two inputs u and e u and e are the two inputs okay I can look at it as a model with two inputs and I can convert this into a state space form okay MATLAB toolbox of course will give, give you this state space form if you give the transfer if you give the model and say give me SS I think it is called ID to SS or something there is a function it will give you the state space form okay so you will get a state space matrix see you have the states oh there should be there is a mistake here this should okay so you have two inputs one is u other is e e is the innovations okay there is only single output suppose you take single rmax model one input one output and one innovations then you can convert into this standard form okay so this has a deeper relationship with uh, something we are going to study later called Kalman filtering we will talk about it later. So, uh, with this I come to an end of these lectures. So, we looked at different kinds of models we looked at gray box models black box models uh, of course if you have a mechanistic model nothing like it okay that is the best model if you do not have you can still develop a model completely from data that is black box models if you can merge the two that is a gray box model okay and this is the most crucial part in a, any control project developing a good model okay. So, we have discussed 
all kinds of uh, issues that are related to model development. These are the some of the references that I have been using for my notes. So they are not from one place. Um, a good book for beginners is this uh, Soderstrom and Stoika system identification or Shumve and Stoffer. These two are first and the fourth are very good books for beginners. Okay, for advanced users, uh, Lung's book, or actually I would say one, three, and four. These are very good books for beginners. Even even these two books, Astrom and Franklin and Powell. So the last book and the second book, uh, sorry, last book and the third book are they are uh, very good, but they are little advanced. So 